work papers. My name is Brad Hull, and I'm a business development manager with Intuit here in Canada. I see a couple of you out there on the webinar who, uh, who I had the pleasure of meeting and working with. And I have with me today Sonia Narval, who is one of our internal account managers. And Sonia is going to be monitoring and responding to any of the questions that you post through the, uh, the interface. So please feel free to ask questions as we go through the presentation. Uh, Sonia and I will also remain on the line for at least 10 or 15 minutes after the presentation to answer any additional questions that might come forward. So we appreciate we appreciate all of you taking the time to join us today. And uh, I'm going to try to speak a little louder. Hopefully you can hear me a little better. And uh, as I said, today we're going to be talking all about uh, Intuit's work paper software. So we all know that time is our scarcest resource and accuracy usually comes at the expense of time. But what if there was a way for us to optimize both time and accuracy? Now we live in this industry, we know that you live by deadlines. This often means late nights at the office, weekends away from home, and ultimately more work and less and less time. And this is uh, particularly poignant for those of you who just came off of the end of April tax deadlines. One of the best ways that we have and that technology is enabling for us to get back some of this time is automation. And automation really is the holy grail within the accounting and bookkeeping industry. Automation means less manipulation, less sorting and grouping, and less data entry. But where can we start? What's a good place to look at when we're starting this? So let's take a look at what a typical accountant's day is like. And Intuit does a lot of research on an ongoing basis. So this information comes from uh, you know, some research that we have done into the industry. And we know that a typical accountant spends an inordinate amount of time working on financial statement preparation, tax returns, and manipulating data in Excel. When you couple all of this stuff together, it means that typically you're looking at about 52% of an accountant's time being spent working on year-end returns, whether it be taxes or financial statements and all of the processes wrapped into those. So that is a huge amount of time that is being allocated towards those activities. Is there a way that technology can help? Well, that's a pretty leading question. Obviously, we are going to say yes, but there truly are ways uh, that technology can help. Now, many of you are already going to be familiar with dedicated working paper software, such as Caseware and Jazzit or CCH Engagement. Most of these products have many pain points, including they're costly, often too costly for a small to medium accounting office. Uh, many of them are very complicated to use and feature bloated. Uh, with steep learning curves to get on board with working with them. And most of them also don't have any way of linking accountants changes or adjusting journal entries back into the client file or back to the financial statements. So yes, there's technology out there that can help with the financial statements, but often at a high cost. Well, there is a better way. So you likely have clients who are using QBO and you're already using QBOA, our leading edge cloud-based small business software. 
And you're obviously aware that QBOA brings collaborative tools that allow you to experience much more efficiency with your clients, better collaboration, and a happier client. But how many of you have looked into the working papers component? Work papers built in to QBOA. So let's start off with the basic question of what is work papers? Well, work papers not only simplifies and speeds up the whole year-end process, but it also automatically creates Giphy codes and helps you to prepare your client's financial statements. So this is great if you're doing notice to reader type of engagements with your clients. Why would you want to look at using work papers versus other systems that you might already have in place? Well, there are three key reasons. Number one, you can create your working paper file, including all the adjusting journal entries from directly inside QBOA. It eliminates the need for you to rely on your clients to enter those adjusting journal entries, which they always do. They always do them on time and they always do them accurately. Yeah, probably not. So it eliminates that side. It also allows you to get rid of the inefficient and time consuming routine of mapping all of the accounts through to Giphy. And it further reduces data entry by automatically exporting the Giphy statements into profile or other tax software and into the financial statements. So let's take a closer look at exactly what the system does and how it does it. So to launch working papers, from within one of your client's QBO files. You simply click on the little briefcase to open up your accountant's toolbox and you'll see the top item in that list is work papers. So when you click on that, you are taken into the work papers working trial balance tab. So there's quite a bit of information on this screen. So I'm going to step through each of the different sections so you can get a good understanding of exactly what you're looking at and how it all works together. So right off the top, up at the top left, you can see where in this case it says tax year 2016. So there's a drop down there to select which fiscal year end you're actually working on. Now this activity timeline shows a list of all entries that have been made by your client, by the accountant or bookkeeper, or both of you. You can filter which you're actually looking at. There is a column that shows the opening trial balance. So you can verify that there weren't any changes or alterations made to the opening trial balance, even before you get going. You can also see the unadjusted closing trial balance that incorporates all of the activity that has happened through the year. This column displays any adjusting journal entries that have been entered and we'll go into more detail on this in a couple of minutes. You can also see any transactions that are non-adjusting journal entry transactions that have happened since you started working on the file. So again, we will talk about this in more detail in a couple of minutes. And then of course you can see the full adjusted trial balance. So that's a start, a little bit of an overview of what we're looking at on the screen. But there's also quite a bit more. So most, of account most accountants have experienced instances where the client posts additional transactions after you start the year-end prep work. So this quickly throws off your work, resulting in additional analysis and some inevitable delays. 
So by transferring all of the entries that are currently in the other transaction column of the working trial balance over to the unadjusted balance section, you can quickly and easily isolate any additional entries. So we can see right now we have a number of balances in the other transactions column. So once we have reviewed all of those, we can click on the update unadjusted balance button and that will move everything across into the 2016 unadjusted balance and clears out the other transactions section. Now, anytime if your client goes in and actually posts stuff into the period, it will show in this other transactions column again. So it'll make it very quick and easy for you to identify what items do or do not belong within the fiscal year that you are working on. So that is a, a really powerful benefit of the system that can save you a lot of time and a lot of headache. Now posting actual adjusting journal entry is very, very simple. You simply click on the plus sign in the adjusting entry column. You will record the journal entry and click save. And it's done. And the totals that you have entered in, in the adjusting entries column will show directly in that column that is reserved just for those adjusting entries. Now beyond that, the process of actually working on a year-end engagement uh, involves a lot more than just analyzing the transactions that have come through from the financial uh, management software. Uh, there's a lot of component of tracking notes, annotations, and source documents. And work papers includes functionality for both of those areas. So in this column, you have the ability to add a note to yourself, to your team. So as you are working through the file, you can keep notation of items that are missing or items that you want to verify with the client perhaps, and you've got an easy place to keep track of all of those. The software also includes a column where you can attach a source document or schedule, such as a bank statement or an Excel spreadsheet, directly to the work papers system. And there is always a visual cue showing you if there are any notes or attachments for each of the different accounts in your chart of accounts. Additionally, as you work through each of the accounts, you have the ability to place a check mark beside each item in the chart of accounts as you complete the work in it. So you can see how your progress is coming along. So very visual, makes it easy for you to keep track of all of the different components that are involved with that engagement. Once you have completed the analysis, you have the option of printing or PDFing the trial balance, or you can even export it to Excel. And here's an example. The image on the left shows the trial balance in an Excel worksheet, and the one on the right shows a PDF of the same information. So that's very quick and easy to gather and create right from the system. So that gives you a quick overview of the actual working trial balance section. Now let's move on to the section about Giphy mappings, which is where you'll see some huge productivity gains. So we've moved over to the Giphy mapping tab and we see we can review all of the mappings the work papers has pre-selected for us. Not only does it map each account, but it has grouped those accounts by their respective Giphy codes. If for whatever reason you need to change any of the pre-selected Giphy mappings, you just click on edit Giphy code and it brings up the list of 
full Giphy codes, and you can make whatever changes that you feel you need to. Once you're satisfied with all of the Giphy mappings, you can print or PDF the group schedules, or again, export them to Excel. And here's an example of what those look like. So we have the PDF on the right or the Excel Giphy map on the right. So with work papers, there's no longer any need to manually create and group the Giphy codes. And what's even better is that work paper saves you a lot of time by letting you easily export all of this Giphy code and information into your professional tax software such as Profile. Very simple to do this just by clicking on Save Giphy Codes up at the top right. And then, for example, if you are using Profile, there is a menu option for QBOA import directly within Profile. You simply go and select that GFI file that Work Papers created for you. And voila, your S100 and S125 schedules are auto-completed by that export file, saving you a lot of time and saving you a lot of that, uh, that area where transcription errors or improper data entry can creep into the process because it's pulling it automatically, all of those issues go away. Now, if you need to change any of the mappings or account balances after you've done this import, you would just go back into working papers, make those changes within the system, and then re-import the revised amounts. And that can be a really valuable tool as you do tax planning with your clients as well. So Work Papers also lets you save all of your work by creating a zip file that includes all of the schedules and source documents that you have attached to the file. So you have everything available for future reference. And this is just done by clicking on Finish Review and selecting Archive to Zip. And it will create that full zip file for you and it includes an Excel version of the working trial balance along with all the associated source documents and schedules. The third area that we save a lot of time is the financial statements that are built right in to QBOA and QBO. So with a little bit of tweaking, QBOA lets you, with a couple of mouse clicks, prepare professional-looking year-end financial statements. The process is very simple. From work papers, you just go back to the client's QBO file, click on Reports, Management Reports, and then you click Edit to customize the report template. And QBOA lets you personalize any of the following pages Within the, within the management reports. The title of the report, the table of the contents, the cover letter, so this could be where you can put in the required text for the notice to reader statement, and you can include whichever financial statements that you want, as well as a note page. So you can add as many pages as you'd like to include in any of the reports that are built into QBOA, and because the data is dynamically linked, any change that you make in work papers carries through to the underlying data and out to the financial statements. So everything is dynamically linked together, so you don't need to remember to update anything anywhere else. And here's an example of a client's year-end financial statements with a notice to reader, a table of contents, the financial statements, everything completely automated and updated by QBOA. 
Now I know some of my customers have asked about the current ordering of the assets and liabilities on the balance sheet and that is something we are aware of and our programming team is working on uh, readjusting the order and that is uh, an enhancement that you can expect to see coming soon within QBO. So uh, we are aware of that for anyone who had thought of that question uh, and that will be coming soon. So as a quick recap, why would you use anything else if you're looking to do a notice to reader when working papers is easy to use, it's dynamically linked through to the underlying data and through to the financial statements, and it's free. So if anyone has questions on this, Sonia, say, Sonia is indicating there have been a few questions coming through. So I'm just going to have a look at the, uh, at the question panel now, see if we can answer some of these. So is there, uh, the first one that I see coming up on my list, is there a help guide for this? Uh, there's not actually a help guide at this point. But let me see if I can pull up my screen here. So I don't, if someone can tell me, can you see my, yeah, okay, I can see on Sonia's screen that yes, you can see my, uh, my QBOA now. So I'm just going to go into one of my clients work papers file. The other way that you can actually access work papers is from your QBOA dashboard here. If you go over to the right, you'll see a column titled work papers. So I'm going to go into and launch work papers for one of my clients right from here. And there is right within work papers up here near the top right, show me how work papers works. So if you click on this, it actually steps you through most of the highlights of what I just went through in this presentation. And our training team will be working on more detailed information on how to work with this. We're still, you know, it hasn't been that long since we launched work papers and we're in a period where we're taking a lot of feedback to make the product even better. And while we're doing that, it would be difficult for us to have training materials uh, because there are going to be changes happening to the software quite quickly. But this at least takes you through some of the high levels to remind you of the various components that are available within the system and how they all work together. What other questions did we have, Sonia? Um, this one, a <clears throat> Hold on for a second. I'm just uh, the beta test. So Sonia and I are just going through the, the question list here. Okay. Holly, she has quite a few questions. Uh, what is included in the 24% of the meeting with CEO? So this was on the slide too. Oh, so Arlie, you had questions. What is included in the 24% other activities? Um, unfortunately, I don't know. I, we didn't get the source data to, to that chart. So I'm not sure what activities were included in the other. Sorry, I'm not able to answer that. But uh, I'll see if we can get that answer from our marketing team and maybe forward that on. So Arli, I see that you've already, you've done some beta testing on this and that you've provided feedback. That's excellent. Thank you very much for doing that. And our team will definitely be, uh, will definitely be taking all of those recommendations as they work forward on 
you know, sort of version 1.1, if you will, of work papers. Um, there was a question whether there will be a recording available. Yes, we will be making this recording available to those of you who attended. Uh, so there was a uh, question about the related checklists, current assets is, and so forth. At this point in time, we don't have any of the, you know, the checklists, the PEM checklists or any of those incorporated into the system. Those would certainly be things that the team will look at going forward. Uh, it'll certainly, you know, based on feedback that we get and of the knowledge that those are some of the things that are required as part of the entire process. Uh, certainly, if you have those checklists in uh, another format, such as Word, then you could work through those checklists and attach them into the working papers file. So that's that's something that would be there as well. Uh, Arlie, glad that you like the zip file and that it includes all of the attachments, so that's great. Um, can working papers be used at interim times during the year before the before the year end. You could actually trigger the start of a working papers file at any time um, and the system is going to keep track and show you all of the other transactions that have happened since your last review. So I, you know, I, I believe that yes you could work at it any time. Uh, yes there's a comment there about the account order. We are aware of that so that's great. Uh, will it work with tax cycle? Uh, I personally don't know the details on, on how tax cycle works. If tax cycle has the ability to import a Giphy file, uh, the file that is created from uh, work papers is a standard format GIF, Giphy file. So if casework or if uh, tax cycle can do that, then yes. One of my clients, Sean, did use it, and he said, "Yes, you can use it." Oh, okay. He's used it. Oh, okay, we have another another one of uh, the attendees here saying that yes, it does work with Tax Cycle. They have used it, so that's great. Thank you. Uh, what happens when you have five open years? How are you doing a backlog? Um, I don't know if you recall at the top left here. There's the option for selecting the tax year. So if all of that source data is available within the QuickBooks file, uh, in that dropdown, uh, you will get the options for previous tax years. And you can just start with the, the oldest one and move your way forward. Uh, can you create templates that work with multiple clients? Uh, absolutely. You can create um, a, a template of... Uh, management reports. You can create multiple different, as many different sets as you need uh, based on your requirements. So you certainly have that option. Uh, if clients use adjusting entries, it should go to the adjustment column, right? Um, the adjusting entries, uh, I'm not sure if a client has the option of creating an adjusting journal entry. Um, and I'm just going to open up the, the interface here. So there's this check mark. Is this an adjusting journal entry? Now it is automatically clicked for me in this case because I went here directly from work papers, uh, but I can't log in as a, as a non-accountant user to see if, um, if the file gives that check mark option to a an end user client if you will so I can't verify that but that's something that you you might want to check maybe when you're visiting with one of your clients uh, have them go to enter a journal entry and see if that uh, adjusting journal entry checkbox is available uh, we'll be allowing us to customize the management financials more so that we could remove subtotals uh, I'm not certain on exactly what options are going to be included as we enhance the, uh, the management financials. That's a good piece of feedback to provide to us using the feedback button. And then uh, that's certainly something that will be taken into consideration as the, as the, uh, the enhancements are made to that. Uh, how can we use work papers on a client that is just on Excel? Uh, at this point, you cannot. It is linked directly to QuickBooks Online. 
So you need to have the client using QBO in order to take advantage of worked papers. Uh, does this mean that work papers in QBO has the same powerful functions as caseware? No. Uh, work papers is not designed as a replacement for caseware for all ca for all instances because you know caseware is a, a tool that's been designed over many many years uh, to meet things uh, like the requirements that you have for audits, for instance. And work papers certainly is not designed. Uh, nor does it have the functionality that you would need to perform an audit. Uh, so it's it's not that level of sophistication, but if you're looking at the notice to reader type of engagements, then certainly uh, that's what we're working towards and that's where the system is going to, to help save you a lot of time and effort as well. Uh, let's see, just reading through some more of the comments here. Can you copy a management, hello Lynn, how are you? Can you copy a management template from one QBO file to another QBO file? Uh, I'm not sure at this point. Sonia, can you just think, make a point of that? Write that down for me to check for Lynn and I'll let you know. Um, I don't believe you can copy a template from one to another, but there might be another way of doing it. I will look into that. Uh, the two columns, adjusting entries and other transactions, what's the difference between the two columns? So uh, you're referring to this adjusting entries column and other transaction columns. So adjusting entries, these are adjusting journal entries that you create. So it tracks them in a separate column so you can see what are the amounts that are strictly due to adjusting journal entries that you have put in. The other transactions column, this is any transaction that is not a journal entry that has been entered by you or more appropriately by your client after you started working on the file. So all of these items that are showing across the top here, this entire list of activity across the top, it's all of the sum total of these that show up in the other transactions column. And then when you update your unadjusted balance, it takes all of these other transactions, moves them into the unadjusted balance, clears out this activity list, and restarts again. So you can see, okay, I worked all through these transactions up to this point in time, and now anything else that comes across, you will see them basically as showing up as new into that activity feed. I hope that makes sense. Uh, just going to have to get my mouse onto my other screen and scroll down a little more. See if uh, don't see too many other questions here. Um, why is the amounts in the other transactions column not clickable? To ensure that we can dig deeper into it, uh, it's not clickable in this column. But all of these items across the top. These are all of the transactions that make up the amounts in the other transactions column. So everything is here for you to actually get through to. Uh, are Lee just trying to read through your, uh, your latest question here? <laughs> uh, Okay, so the key, as long as you have provided this feedback back to the team, that would be fantastic. Uh, then they can take that into consideration uh, to make sure that we're doing everything possible to make this as efficient a tool as we possibly can. Uh, the transactions on the timeline are not organized by account. Okay, thank you, Juby. That's, that's a good point. And uh, we'll make sure that that feedback gets back to the the development team. It's uh, a matter of figuring out the best way to work all of these uh, different suggestions into the process. 
Uh, Arlie, you still have to use a manual Excel file the, for the continuity CCA schedule. Um, so for capital cost allowance, yeah, there's nothing specifically within QBO or the work papers at this point that tracks uh, capital cost allowance. That's uh, from my understanding. But as I always say, I'm not an accountant or a bookkeeper. I just play one on the internet, so I'm doing my best. Um, uh, Sherry, you had a question. Uh, will the Giphy codes import into the T1? No, at this point in time, we're only importing into the T2. Uh, Arlie, the info is partially in profiles, so it should be synced back to QBO. Uh, I'm sure that's something that the development team is looking at as well, is how to take the information uh, back from profile back into QBO as well. Uh, that's future, Have you know certainly don't have any idea on when something like that might be in place, but uh, those efficiencies will be something that, uh, that we'll be looking at, I'm sure. Anyone have any further questions? Looks like we've pretty much exhausted everything for right now. So that's great. Thank you very much for the questions, everyone. We appreciate it. The feedback, whether it's on the work papers or any component of QBO or QBOA, the feedback is what helps us to make the product better and better for you and for everyone that uses the system. So please make use of that feedback button anytime, all the time, as many times as you want. Uh, we definitely pay attention to it and it has an impact on where on the enhancement list uh, various items fall. So thank you very much everyone for attending the webinar. Appreciate you taking the time. Hope you found it useful. Uh, for those of you that attended, we will send out a link to the recording so that you can refer back. And wish all of you a wonderful day and a wonderful week. And enjoy the, uh, if you're in southern Ontario anyway, it looks like we're finally going to, you're welcome, Lynn. Uh, we're finally going to have some nice, warm, warm weather. So enjoy it. And don't forget your sunscreen. Thank you, everyone, and uh, have yourself a wonderful day.